Go. Okay, so maybe Kuma would like to do the introduction to fields. Thank you uh, to uh, uh, welcome to everybody here and also online. Uh, we are now near the end of uh, your thematic program. I hope it's been uh, very successful and uh, productive. And usually we find that with the uh, thematic programs, they're just like a launching pad, a starting point, and that it leads to uh, much collaboration and further work even after uh, the program for, for years to come. And I hope it's that uh, that's the case for uh, this uh, program as well. Uh, I want to thank all of you for your uh, cooperation and uh, collaboration, uh, because this is not the usual way we do things. But uh, but uh, somehow we have all, as a community, we've been very um, cooperative in terms of uh, adapting ourselves to this new environment and trying to benefit as much as possible from it. Uh, we hope very soon that we'll be able to go back to a, uh, a an in-person, totally in-person format. Of course, uh, the recent developments, which are all of you are following in the news, uh, put the actual scheduling of that into a little bit of doubt. But anyway, I just wanted to, uh, again, once again, uh, thank you for your uh, participation in the workshop and uh, and in the program. And uh, glad I'm uh, glad I'd be very happy to know that it's been pr uh, productive for you. And also thank you for your uh, your cooperation in adapting to the to the new environment. Once again, thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Kamal. Thank you. Um, okay, so so the first next talk is by Zoe Chatirakis on non-existence, difference closures of difference fields. Thank you. Thank you, Dugald, and uh, I'm very pleased to be able to speak at this conference. I have worked now counting, I mean, I close to 30 years with uh, UDI, mainly on difference fields, but also on uh, PAC fields or differential, differential fields. It has been a pleasure. I hope it will continue. And well, thank you, UDI. So I'm going to talk about work on uh, difference fields and the existence, the possible existence of difference closures. So this question was asked to me. So first of all, I guess I should give the definition. A difference field is a commutative field with a distinguished automorphism, which I usually denote by sigma. I mention automorphism because in the literature, it's often assumed to be just an endomorphism. So for instance, the Frobenius map would define an endomorphism of a non-perfect uh, uh, field of characteristic P, right? Uh, there is a notion of existentially closed models. So a difference field K sigma is difference closed if every finite system of difference equations with coefficients in K, which has a solution in some difference field extending K, already has a solution in K. I should mention, I should explain what a difference equation is. It's uh, you take the a ring of polynomials say in x1, xn, but then you expand it by adding variables x1, sigma, x, x2 to the sigma, et cetera, et cetera, for all the transforms of the xj's. So you will have, it will be a polynomial ring in sigma to the i of xj, for i, a positive integer, a non-negative integer rather, and for j going from one to n. So this is an ordinary polynomial ring, infinitely many variables. And you have to, so a difference equation is just an equation in that big polynomial ring. And it's, uh, it will be satisfied if and only if by, by a tuple a1, a n, if and only if when you plug a1, a n, sigma of a1, et cetera, sigma of a n, you get zero, okay? So this is exactly in the same way as with differential fields or with fields with operator. This is the same type of thing. Right, so a field is difference closed if every finite system of, of these difference equation, which has a solution in an extension of the field K already has a solution in K. And then you have a notion of closure. You would say that the difference field extending K is a difference closure of K. If, first of all, it's 
difference closed. And if whenever U is a difference closed field containing K, then there is a K embedding of L into K. Right. So this is the exact analog of differential closure of differential field, but put in a difference context. I mean, there are many parallels between the uh, differential algebra, for instance, and difference algebra. I mean, they were developed at the same, same time in the 1930s. Difference algebra is a bit more complicated because of various things. Okay. I should say that in the case of differential fields of characteristic zero, Differential closures exist and they are unique up to isomorphism. So the natural question is, is it also the case for different fields? So this question was posed by Michael Singer a long time ago now. And I guess my first, uh, my first reaction was, well, of course, no. I mean, this is clearly not. OK, well, yes. So OK, apart from the obvious reasons why there shouldn't be one, why one should make some additional assumption, we will see that there are other non-obvious reasons why this is not the case. So I guess I should mention, first of all, you know, the fact, I mean, why might it not be the case? So the existence and uniqueness of differential closure follows from the results of Bloom, who showed that the theory is omega stable. Then you apply results of Schiller, which give the existence and uniqueness of so-called prime models, okay? Now, in our context, our theory is not even omega stable. It's not even stable, rather. And moreover, even if it was, I mean, you, with Woody, we had some results saying that really what, the reason it wasn't stable, at least in characteristic zero, was really due to the fixed field. Right, and that apart from that, well, it was it was almost stable. It wasn't stable, but it was almost stable. But actually, it was only super stable, not omega stable. So, if you think about it, in the stable, so super stable context, there is no prime model. All right. I mean, okay, sometimes there are, but mo most of the time there isn't. So there was no reason that even if we could sort of uh, get rid of the problem sort of, uh, of the fixed field, that prime model should exist. Okay, so let me first give you the stupid uh, reasons why you have need to do more assumptions. One of the things is that when you have a difference field, usually there are many non-isomorphic ways of extending the automorphism to the algebraic closure, okay? So obviously you need to fix that, otherwise you won't have a prime model, okay? So here are two examples. So first of all, with Q, K equals Q, or more a bit more sophisticated example, K equals C of T, Sigma is the identity on C, sends T to QT, so called the Q difference, right? And then, well, if you look at what happens to square root of T, there are two possibilities of extending the map, okay? Right. So one needs to get rid of that problem. The other problem is, as I said, I mean, really in characteristic zero, the instability comes mainly from the fixed field. So this fixed field is what is called pseudo-finite. So it's an infinite model of the theory of finite fields. And therefore it has in particular the independence property. So let's say for instance, they are two to the LF zero type over the empty set. Okay, so it's, this behaves badly. And uh, just the fact that there is a pseudo-finite field is telling you that there won't be any prime models, okay? So, okay, so you say, well, uh, well, we will add a condition saying that we take care of both these obstacles. So this condition is simply where we will assume that the difference field K is algebraically closed and that it's fixed field F is pseudo finite. Now there is some hope, you see, what happens is that with the, by a result of Afshordel, there are, um, there are existing uh, difference closed fields of characteristic zero, 
which contains this k and which do not increase the pseudo finite field f, the fixed field. Okay, so you could imagine that well, uh, it would be okay. Unfortunately, it is not quite enough. So, well, of course, in characteristic p, this is certainly not enough because there are other different fields around. But even so, what happens is in uh, so let me back, go back to that. What happens is that uh, oh, that's interesting. So this is not uh, right. Let me just talk without uh, saying anything, um, without reading the, the slide where it should not be characteristic zero, but it should be characteristic P greater than zero. So what happens in characteristic P greater than zero is that there are types of rank one, I mean, so let's say order one equations defining subgroup of the additive group, right? Which, so you have an additive subgroup, let's say defined by the equation sigma to the sigma of x equals x to the p minus x, and it will have a dual subgroup b. So this dual subgroup will have the property that there is actually, depending on the way you extend sigma to the algebraic to the, to the ambient field, there will be a definable non-degenerate uh, bilinear map from A cross B to FP, which tells you something about what happens in a certain at entire extension of a point little a, little b of A cross B, okay? So which means that, for instance, if you if you have named the elements of B of A of the first subgroup, you will need, of course, to realize elements of B, but you have two to the LF zero choice as to which of these bilinear form you are going to realize. So there won't be able, you won't be able to, to have a prime model. I mean, you cannot realize two to the LF zero types inside a prime model. And um, actually, this provides a whole set, a whole family of counterexample of things which would be problematic. Okay, so in characteristic P, things are definitely messy, right? Uh, okay, in characteristic zero, the result. I mean, we found the result with Woody which is, uh, well, it's not part of an infinite family as, as a fact, I mean, they, it's, it's sort of uh, quite isolated as a result. And it has to do with uh, modular curves. So basically J invariant of, cur of elliptic curves. And you know that there is a, there is a, a how do you say? So if, uh, if you look at the elliptic curve with invariant A, and if you fix a subgroup of EA of order P square, so a cyclic subgroup, right? Then to A, you can associate two invariants, two J invariants. The in J invariants of E mod PA, EA mod PA rather, and the J invariants of E mod A. And it turns out that the triple A, A1, A2, satisfies a certain, certain field equation. And in fact, A1 A1 and A1, A2 are going to satisfy the same equation over big K, if little a is transcendental, all right? And so this defines a certain type, which, uh, I mean, or rather a certain partial type, okay? which uh, when you realize it, you will have uh, that, uh, I mean, at least the quantifier free part will look exactly like what I explained. And you know, so, so you send A, A1 to A1, A2 via sigma. And so you will send uh, A2, A3 uh, to uh, A1, A2 to A2, A3, where A3 is going to be the J invariant of E modulo, a subgroup of order PQ, cyclic order. Of, okay. Right. But may, it may comes up. Yes. A question? So, does it, are you, is this M? Uh, um, you say M is generated by the P torsion subgroup. By that, you mean all the P power 
all the P power torsion? Uh, mm. I'm worried that A3 yes, is not going to be no, in P the torsion, P torsion, P torsion. Uh, no, P power torsion, pardon, sorry, yes. Okay, so, so P torsion means- I mean, I need to have all these sub, yeah, you know, okay. I need to have a tower cyclic subgroup, which uh, which extends uh, my original P A, you see? Okay, okay, yes, I see. Okay, thank you. Right. Uh, because you see these A, uh, yeah, right. Okay, so anyway, what's happening is that it turns out that this field, they are, so basically you have a set of equations which determines the, the way, the, 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 the different field generated by solution, okay? What it looks like, but it doesn't say what happens on the algebraic closure. And in fact, there are two to do zero ways of extending to the algebraic closure. So, Kalj, Kalj, this is here, it's a typo, cannot have a difference closure. Okay. All right. So that's that. So, I mean, note that it doesn't quite answer the question that one would like to answer, meaning this is one example. We say, okay, there are some other examples with uh, moduli of abelian varieties or stuff like that, but you know, these are sort of Okay, if, if one takes care of all of this, then what? What happens? All right. Okay. Now it turns out I was telling you about this thing, uh, you know, that the theory was only super stable. If it was, if it had been stable, it would be only super stable, and therefore, you know that they are not always prime models. However, the result of Schiller. Shella says that if you look at a different category of models, so instead of looking at prime models, you look at something else. So models which are a bit more, well, what we call saturated than, uh, than uh, the original models, then they are prime models and they, and they are unique. Okay, so let me, uh, let me explain to you what it is. So let's say we take an uncountable cardinal, for instance, LF1, 2 to the LF0, cardinality of the continuum, right? You say that U is kappa difference closed if every system of less than kappa difference equations over U, which has a solution in some difference field extending U, <laughs> already has a solution in U. As you see, I edited my, my slides and not quite well. So what does it say? Let's say, for instance, with LF1, you see that it says that every countable system of different equation, which has a solution in an extension, has a solution. Now, countable system, I didn't say how many variables it has. So for instance, if you take an element A, you can describe entirely its algebraic closure, the way sigma behaves on the algebraic closure. So this takes care of the problem I had before. My problem was that, well, when I, when I had this, an equation, well, I didn't know that this didn't characterize uniquely how my, the, the, the algebraically closed field containing that solution looked like, you see? So this takes care of that problem. And you see that indeed you can uh, look at, so I guess I, now I should go back to my notation, which was uh, right. So it turns out that so if A is a subset of a difference field, algebraic equals difference field, which is uh, uh, difference closed, it turns out that the model theoretic algebraic closure is coincides really with the smallest algebraic closed subfield of U, which contains A. So what does it mean the smallest algebraic closed subfield? So first of all, you take the field generated by A, then you cl start closing under sigma and sigma inverse, right? To get a difference field. And finally, you take the field theoretic algebraic closure, okay? Now clearly any element in that field is going to be, you know, it, it's, um, 
how do you say, it's going to be, the, the, there will be a, a, an equation, a difference equation, or a finite set of difference equation, which is such that it's the only, the only finitely many guys satisfying that, right? So certainly this set ACL of A has to be contained in the algebraic closure, but in fact it is. So really, and not only that, but actually one can show that once you know the behavior of sigma on this ACL of A, you know everything you need to know. In other words, the theory of different closed fields union the quantifier free, the set of all quantifier free uh, equa difference equation and equations satisfied by ACL of A is going to tell you everything about what happens in the big model, okay? Good, so let me go back. So the, so you see in a sense, so it does not eliminate quantifiers. I mean, that, that's the big difference with differentially closed fields. But however, if you know things about this algebraic closure, then you know everything. So it's quite close, right? So in particular, if you allow, you know, for kappa equals LF1, you will be able to talk about the algebraic closure. So there is a version for LF0, which is stronger that what, than what we call LF0 saturated. And it says the following. If you take, so we have uh, this big field U, right? And you take a finite tuple and you look at this algebraic closure of that finite tuple inside U. Uh, no, not inside U, inside some difference, algebraic equals difference field K, okay, right. And U is going to be LF epsilon difference closed if and only if any embedding of an algebraically closed difference field subfield A of B into U extends to an embedding of B into U, all right? So in particular, Right, so you see automatically, for instance, that uh, an F epsilon saturated, an F LF epsilon closed difference field is going to have cardinalities, certainly at least the two to the LF zero, because there are many ways, I mean, there are many algebraically closed difference subfields which are generated by, difference fields which are generated by a finite total. Okay, which are the ACL of the finite. All right. So these things exist just by uh, pure nonsense. I mean, the fact that you have a kappa difference closed, I mean, you just, you know, start enumerating different equations and you solve them and uh, et cetera, et cetera. So just a general nonsense argument. I'm not saying that you get something pretty, but you, get, you definitely get something. Then there is a notion of, if you work in that category, in the category of kappa saturated, kappa difference closed models, there is a notion of kappa closure. So which is the obvious one. So if L contains K of the difference field, we say that L is a kappa difference closure of K if it is kappa difference closed, and if K embeds into every kappa difference closed field containing K. The, the usual thing, right. And the result says that at least in characteristic zero, provided the fixed field does not bother us too much, they exist and they are unique. So let me tell you the results. So kappa K is an algebraically closed difference field of characteristic zero. Kappa is an uncountable cardinal. And we assume that the fixed field F of K, so fixed field, I, I never defined it, but it's the element of K, which are fixed by sigma. I mean, it's the set of solution of sigma of X equals X. We know that it's a subfield of K, and we assume that it's, I, did, I forgot to say what it's, I assume, that it's not only um, saturated, but it's also sort of finite.
No, actually, it's okay. I think what I write implies that it's, uh, well, not quite. Uh, let me try to write it. Okay, good. Um, so in the case of the field without an automorphism, right? I'm just saying that any system of polynomial equation in, le in less than kappa, less than kappa many polynomial equations, which has a solution in a regular extension of F has a solution in F. And the result is that then K has a kappa difference closure U and it is unique up to isomorphism over K. So you see this, uh, this tells you, this solves in a sense the, 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 the question in the characteristic zero case. I think, I mean, I was happy with that, uh, with that result because, well, uh, let's put it that way. You know, the fact of uh, this uh, Aleph one's difference closed is not such a complicated uh, notion. I mean, you are just replacing finite system by countable system of equations, you see? Why not? I mean, this is not, to, this is not unreasonable at all. And it certainly takes care of the problems. So in characteristic P, in characteristic P, well, I really am sure that it won't work, and that nothing is going to work. And the reason is these uh, families of, uh, of the pairs of subgroups of GA with these uh, bilinear forms does not let me degenerate by linear forms. So I'm convinced this is not going to work. But okay, this is this would be fairly technical to show, and I haven't been up to it yet. So the things which work, which make the thing work. So as I said, the first ingredient was that if you start with a difference field, which which satisfies the assumption of the theorem, right? So with the subfield, with the fixed field F, which is pseudo finite and kappa saturated, then in fact you can find a kappa difference closed field U containing K and which does not increase the fixed field. So the proof is exactly the same as Afshodel's proof. It's easy. I mean, you just you just do it. It, it's easy, it's really easy. And otherwise, well, um, I think I'm not going to go into the details because I have only 20 minutes, I guess. Um, okay, we use, so, so it follows a certain strategy of difference close uh, of model theory plus some ingredients of um, of difference algebra. So first of all, as I said, what's important when you have a tuple is not only the kind of difference equation it satisfies, but also what's happening on the relative algebraic closure of the difference field it generates. Okay. So this is what I'm going to call a type, the description of all this, all right? So two elements will have the same type over K if and only if there is an isomorphism, two elements A, B will have the same type over K, if and only if there is a difference field isomorphism between ACL of A, A and ACL of A, B, which sends A to B, and is the identity on A. So there are three kinds of things you need to to deal with. So the first one is an element which does not satisfy any difference equation over K. So it turns out that in that case, this type, okay, it's certainly unstable, but however, it is stationary. And it, uh, it corresponds to the generic type of our theory. So every element is going to be the product of two transformally transcendental elements, or I guess every non-zero element. But uh, I mean, these are easy to deal. If you have a kappa saturated model, it needs to have a transformal transcendental base of cardinality at least kappa, okay? So that's easy to do. Uh, if it already has 
such a transformal transcendence. If K has already a transformal transcendence base of cardinality kappa, then we don't do anything. And if not, we add elements which are transformally transcendent. Okay, that certainly is going to be totally unique. Then you have what's called the types of finite rank. And in the, since we are in a super simple theory, we can sort of analyze them in terms of simpler pieces. And I guess what is particular in our case is that either you are very strongly connected to the fixed field, that's what I called internal to fixed sigma, and then, well, I guess what you are doing is that you sort of neutralize those guys because, because you know, internal to fixed sigma, well, we know that our fixed sigma is already big. And so actually it turns out that they don't pose much problem, those guys. And the second thing is, well, we have types which are what I called one based of SU rank one. So you don't really need to know what it means, but it just means that they, in that case, in our case, characteristic zero case, it means that they really behave as if they were super stable of rank one, okay? So which means that to, for those types, you can really apply the um, normal strategy of building models, of building kappa saturated models, okay? So this is what does the stuff. And so you get the, uh, the, the result which is not surprising. So kappa difference closure of the difference to K, if there is a type finite topoly nu, then type of A over K, in other words, the algebraic closure, I mean, ACL of K, the, 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 the isomorphism type of this difference field is implied by its restriction to some Different, different subfield of K of cardinality less than kappa. Okay, so that's what you call kappa isolated. And further, if you have a sequence of elements which all satisfy the same kinds of formulas over K and what we call an indiscernible sequence, then it has lengths less than or equal to kappa. So for instance, if K for instance, you will not be able to realize more than kappa times the, uh, the, the type of the generic element, right? That will not, not be forbidden. And then you show that the kappa difference closed field containing K and satisfying these two properties are K as well. So that's the proof. Okay. So, uh, right. I guess I was at some point I was really thinking about trying to really to extract everything that made it work. There is a notion of stability of a, over a predicate. I'm not sure that this is enough, but anyway. So now I'm going to talk about an application of this result. So with uh, Thomas Blossier, uh, Charlotte Ardouin and Amador Martin Pizarro, we looked at various automorphism groups and we were in particular very much intrigued by this result of uh, Daniel Lascar. I mean, not intrigued by the result. I mean, we were, so he proved that if you look at the set of auto, uh, the group of automorphism of C, which leave, which fix the algebraic closure of Q, this is simple as an abstract proof. Now, it's very surprising that it took so long to prove such a, fundamental result. And uh, so, well, he did it. He actually, it was a continuation of something else about automorphism groups of uh, countably saturated, strongly minimal structures, whatever that means, okay? So other kinds of structures, well. And the proof was quite combinatorial. People started looking at these automorphism groups and there were results obtained by Catherine Tent and uh, Martin Ziegler on isometry group of the Eurizon space. And I think also the, okay, right. So simplicity of that group modulo the normal subgroup of bounded isometries. Um, well, Richard Connors, extended the Lascar's results to automorphism groups of uncountably saturated differentially closed field of characteristic zero, 
which fix the subfield of differentially algebraic elements. Okay. So you take, so what is an uncountable saturated? Well, it's something which is uncountable and saturated in its cardinality, okay? So when you have a, we know that the, the, the theory of differential closed fields of characteristic zero is omega stable. So they have saturated models in their cardinalities. And here we are looking at the, those which fix the subfield of differentially algebraic elements. Okay, now it's clear that if you look at an automorphism group of this uh, uh, saturated uh, differentially closed field U, right? If you look at those which fix the subfield of differentially algebraic elements, so in other words, the elements which satisfy some non trivial differential equation over the empty set, like for instance the constants, right? then this is going to be a normal subgroup of the whole automorphism group of U. So certainly you need to, to get rid of that. So, but if you have done that, then it's simple. And right. So in the case of different fields, we are going to generalize this result. And this is what uh, we obtain with uh, Thomas, uh, Charlotte and Amador is that if you take a difference field of characteristic zero and you assume that you, this difference field is kappa prime over the closure of the empty set. So what's the closure of the empty set? The closure of the empty set is all the elements of U which satisfy some non-trivial difference equation over the, fixed, over the empty set. So for instance, the fixed field in particular. So it will contain the fixed field of this U, right? And then we can prove that the automorphism of U over this A is also simple, all right? And this actually follows, I mean, the proof uses the fact that because U is kappa prime over this A, it is unique up to isomorphism, okay? It uses the description that was given and therefore, you know, when you, you can work with the automorphisms. Corollary, if U is an uncountable difference because field of characteristic zero, which is saturated, then the automorphism group of U over the closure of the empty set is simple. Okay, why did I, why did we want to do this kappa prime thing? Is because for, because the, our theory is very complicated. I mean, in general, over a set of, uh, size kappa, or you will have two to the kappa types to realize. So, I mean, there are usually, there are no saturated models unless you assume some kind of uh, continuum hypothesis, okay? Generalized continuum hypothesis. So what we did in that paper, it was actually, I mean, it was just that we wanted to, to sort of, extract all the ingredients of Lascar's proof or Lascar's and Conner's proof and see what made it work, okay? Uh, so we express them in terms of four properties. So I should say the original version that I was basing myself on had nine properties, but now it has only four. So it, there has been improvement. So the, the examples we get, we get several examples. So I guess the one we have, this difference field, this ACFA is the only unstable one, right? And uh, I don't know if there are other obvious examples. For instance, I was thinking about the theory of differentially closed field with an automorphism, and it's not clear that that things will work. And I guess I should say something which about the other examples. So, um, so there is, uh, how do you say? There, there are several examples. So first of all, the, uh, so obviously, you know, the algebraically closed fields are going to, um, to satisfy those hypotheses. 
but also the differentially closed fields with several commuting derivations, okay, of characteristic zero, of course. Um, so the different differentially closed, the difference closed fields that we had. The theory of separably closed fields of positive characteristic P and finite degree of imperfection. So here, the, the closure is going to be uh, with respect to the generic type. It's going to be uh, the closure with, so the generic type, you have a finite uh, P basis. So to an element, you can adjoin its coordinate with respect to that P basis, okay? And the type is generic, and, and you continue, of course. You can continue. So you are you, to each element, you are, you adjoin a tree of height omega, and of uh, I guess uh, to each element you have p to the e uh, branches. From each element you have p to the e branches going out from each node, and the generic type is the type which says that at each level the guys are independent, algebraically independent over the base. Okay, and the closure is are the types which are which do not uh, which are not the generic ones, but they are not the generic ones in, in the following sense that you know when you have their their tree right. If you look at the tree which is associated to the element, then no such no uh, there won't be any nodes such that. Starting from that node, you get the generic tree. Okay, so it's a bit stronger than saying that at every level you satisfy algebraic equations. It's stronger than that. Okay, so this is uh, so this is I guess it might not be true in all cardinals again because of question are they are they kappa prime models or not? But okay, and finally the last example is the theory of um, so it's a theory which has been considered by uh, Rahim Moussa and Tom Scanlon about uh, D-free, D-closed fields of characteristic zero, which are equipped with the N-free derivations. And so basically you have derivations, but nothing commutes, right? And I guess they are also, just, I don't know if they are stable or mega stable, but okay. So anyway, so these are four examples, and here again, the, the B generic is is, is uh, the the notion of the generic type is uh, is easy. I mean, it's just not satisfying the equation at all. Right. Okay. Well, I think I'm going to stop. Here are the um, references, and I guess then I have blank pages if I if people want to ask questions. Thank you. Okay, so thank you very much, Sarah. Oh, are there questions? Yeah, so I have a question. Yes. 